Greg Moes from Modak Dairy. Jim Moes. We're the fourth generation uh, on the uh, involved in the dairy operation here. The cross Vent Barn is kind of the new generation barn uh, that uh, l within the last uh, eight to ten years been uh, cross vented. What it actually is, it's a it's a barn where we're housing all 2,000 head of our cows. Uh, the barn is uh, 930 feet long by 300 feet wide. Uh, the south wall is uh, all curtain that can be lowered and raised uh, according to temperature outside. The north end side of the barn is 145 uh, four-foot fans that are uh, environmentally controlled in there to, for whatever the temperature is in the barn that runs and cools or uh, whatever it needs to do in the barn. Uh, there's baffles inside the barn so the air movement is controlled so that it's moving across 300 feet so it, it continues the speed of between 9 and 12 miles an hour to, to keep the, uh, the air fresh and the cows cool. All the manure is scraped to the center of the barn. Every time the cows go up, they scrape every pen. And then it's got a fluent system where the pump runs 24-7 and, it, and it, uh, we use sand for bedding and then it uh, pumps it out and it goes in what they call a, a, a sand lane or a beach type and, and the water and the manure is uh, lighter so that flows over the top and goes into the pond and the sand settles out and then we uh, once or twice a day then we go and reclaim the sand and put it up on piles and let it re-dry and then we reuse it. And then we're in the fall of the year then we'll apply the manure. We have a guy that comes in with a hose dragger and he applies the manure to our fields as, as required by the state regulations and stuff, whatever we can put on. You wonder sometimes if we don't wear the water out and you think water is just for washing or watering cows. Well, the water comes in, it passes through a plate cooler. The water and the milk three times will pass each other in this plate cooler. That water actually uh, goes up as high as uh, 100 degrees coming off that and cools the milk. The milk goes in at 100 degrees. Uh, milk will come out at 50 to 60 degrees just by no electricity, no nothing other than just passage of the water. That water where it's pre-warmed already will either go into our water heaters for cleaning or it will go into our, the storage tank if we have too much for the cows to drink, uh, which actually the cows like to drink because they dry, like warm water. They don't like cold water. Uh, that water that actually is, goes through the water heaters will be taken in and that cleans our system. It actually goes through and, and cleans the system three times a day uh, from the, with the hot water and everything. That water then after being used, it's got chemicals and milk and stuff in it, uh, but it'll go into a, another storage tank and then uh, whenever needed, that water is pumped to uh, a storage tank in front of our parlor and that used to flush the whole floors uh, up there where the cows are milking. The dump tank goes over 600 gallons at a time, flushes the, the, tank, the floors clean in our parlor. That water then goes out and, and it's used again because it's recycled. That's what carries the manure and sand out, uh, out of the barn and into the flume and, and into the sand lane. And then that same water is used to uh, transport the, the manure to the field. So, I mean, if you're going to wear the water out, we would be doing it here. We kind of think the older uh, technology is RFID tags uh, where each cow uh, coming into the parlors record it or milk weights time of day. Um, pretty much everything you want to know about that animal can either be pulled up on a handheld out in the barn because through the use of a wand reading that tag. Uh, other technology is uh, the, probably the newest one we're uh, doing now is uh, what we call teat scrubbers. Actually, instead of we used to have a, a procedure where you went and stripped the cow, you dipped her, you dried her, all this with by hand and doing this. Uh, now we have the new technology, it's, it's a teat scrubber. You take it's a series of little brushes you put uh, on the teat and it, and it cleans and disinfects and dries it all in one motion. All in, and it's easier on the hands, uh, easier on people. The cows enjoy it because it's massaging them. Uh, you know, some of the stuff in between that we kind of think is kind of uh, not new anymore is DNA testing. Uh, the animals when they're born as calves we t pull a hair follicle out of their ear, send in and it's tested for about 3,500 different uh, markers is what they call it and then that comes back and it's uh, they can tell us uh, her genetic life what she will be like. So we can go in and, and uh, base our decisions on how we're going to uh, breed or handle them animals uh, in the rest of their life, whether they are going to go to beef or they stay in our milking herd. And the biggest reason for a lot of that is right now is with uh, sex semen, which is uh, they can uh, sort for female and male pretty reliable, uh, we have too many females. 
so we're able to breed some of our animals to a beef bull and have a better beef go on the market and for the consumers so uh, without having uh, having to have all these cows as uh, replacements which we don't need. It's been quite a few years with our agronomists and stuff and and scouting the fields and then all the trying to get in eventually we're we're getting into more of the of the uh, precision part of the farming and stuff too trying to get more of that in but it's taking time most of in our expansion was to get this up and going and then we're, we're kind of lagging a little bit on that but we're starting to get more and more into that you know more technology into that for for better crops and and stuff and more the 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 roundup readies and alfalfa has been a big plus for us in the last couple of years again now the the tons on it is just remarkable compared to the conventionals right now now when you think about spreading manure jim didn't bring it up but they they apply manure gps when they're putting it down, everything is uh, run through GPS for as far as when they're applying, how they're applying everything. So it's all recorded. I mean, so uh, everybody <laughs> used to think, well, you just take a spreader out and spread manure. That's not the way to do it anymore. And, uh, you know, the technology when they're spreading the manure, they used to have a whole crew of people. Now they're down to three because they have iPods where they control the flow rates, uh, the pumps, everything else from their pickup seat.